press release from the Texas Attorney General's office prosecuting these crimes of the drug companies failed to include the names of Francis Stockerty and Kahn, whose deceptive guidelines were the very foundation of the whole enterprise. Think about why that might have been. You think about it. I don't want to think about it. Um, now, Risperdal is no innocuous <coughs> substance. I know I'm preaching to the converted here, but I just it was even worse than I thought when I, when I uh, did the research and looked at the Rothman report. Um, its use is marked by a vast array of common negative effects on a striking number of physical symptoms. The list of common severe problems totals 37 and includes neurological difficulties such as Parkinsonian symptoms, inability to initiate movement, inability to remain motionless, mental impairment, blurred vision, other problems with eyesight, sexual problems, acute infections, chronic sleep problems, and dizziness. Now, try to keep in mind the huge array and number of these, because then I'm going to tell you who Risperdal was prescribed for in a minute because of all of this. Um, Eleven less common severe effects include blood pressure drop on standing, fast heartbeat, pounding heart, discharge of milk from breasts of men and of women who are not breastfeeding, seborrhea, backache, inability to focus thoughts, trouble breathing, chest pain, and high blood sugar. Its effect on children includes somnolence, sedation, weight gain, development of breasts in male children, and cognitive problems. But Johnson & Johnson produced papers presented falsely as scientific in which they claimed that long-term use in children was safe, though it hadn't even been studied over the long term, and that fully 20% of all children need long-term drugging with Risperdal for significant psychiatric illness. That's in quotes. So, um, despite the dangers, the U.S. and European government data show Risperdal to be one of a number of atypical antipsychotics that over the years have been prescribed for decreasingly serious emotional problems, distractibility, anxiety, insomnia, depression, including in adolescents and children. Papers impelled, now listen to this, I'm sorry to be reading, but I've just, I, I, I've got to hurry. Papers impelled by Johnson & Johnson as part of their Risperdal marketing campaign, which began with the practice guidelines for schizophrenia. They were published in scholarly journals, and as Rothman reports, ghost-written. These papers helped promote use of the drug to treat not only schizophrenia, but also um, uh, childhood onsets, onset schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, bipolar disorder in children and adults. This was what Alan Francis and his colleagues on the DSM-4 could not possibly have foreseen but what his guidelines made possible. Mania, autism, that was a second of the three unforeseen epidemics. Prevention of developmental disorder other than autism, conduct disorder, oppositional defiant disorder, psychosis, aggression, agitation, dementia, below average IQ, and disruptive behavior. So, um, and then it was, and then it, uh, it was also marketed for uh, treating distractibility. So all three of those uh, diagnostic epidemics that could not possibly have been foreseen um, were really impelled by uh, the creation of those practice guidelines.